a warm welcome to all to this inaugural session of the 7 day fpp on gender sensitization and gender equality conducted jointly by the department of youth welfare and the women studies center of which university and center of science and technology we have a uh, and a distinguished list of dignitaries joining us on this inaugural session we will get on with the inauguration now uh we have director of women study center uh, of which university of women science, science and technology dr k ajita uh, dr kain masuran the vice chancellor of which uh, which university of science and technology dr r bindu uh, who happens to be the chancellor of the university uh the minister for higher education and social security of the state of kerala and also a teacher herself uh we have presentation uh addressed by dr pg shankaran who is the provost chancellor of kochi university and we have dr v meera uh, proposing the word of thanks for this inaugural session uh dr meera is the registrar of kochi university of science and technology uh, along with that we have a, a keynote address scheduled uh, after the inaugural session which will be delivered by dr indu agnihotri who is a distinguished uh, professor of gender and we will be beginning uh, the inaugural session right now to propose the welcome address i uh, request dr k ajita who is the director of the women study center for chennai university of science and technology uh, over to you ajita ma'am most respected chief guest of the day our pros chancellor and the minister of higher education of kerala dr bindu r esteemed vice chancellor of qsat dr k n madhusudan respected pro vice chancellor dr p t shankaran respected registrar dr meera v convener of this program dr p k baby organizing secretary dr chinchu program coordinators dr devi somija and dr sangeeta pratha faculty members friends and dear participants good afternoon i am very happy to welcome you all in this inaugural ceremony of the is highly relevant in this present scenario gender discrimination is something that almost all of us are obvious to regardless of our own genders no amount of laws and regulations can make a society egalitarian unless the youth are gender sensitive and this gender sensitization cannot be taught as a course of study rather it should come as an understanding a realization of patriarchal norms and values that are as normalized as the air that we breathe this faculty development program is being organized to try and bring these issues to the notice of the participants and thus to the society we view this program as a part of an ongoing conversation on the topic of gender in our higher education sector coming to my duty today we have with us the most honorable minister for higher education dr r bindu to inaugurate this program on behalf of the youth welfare department and women study center and the university community i extend a warm welcome to our honorable minister welcome madam our respected vice chancellor dr k n madhusudan is presiding over this function i extend a warm welcome to you sir our respected Pro Vice Chancellor Dr. P. G. Shankaran is with us for rendering felicitation. I extend a wholehearted welcome to you, sir. Our respected Registrar Dr. Meera V is going to propose word of thanks to this to the guests and participants. I extend a warm welcome to Dr. Meera V. I welcome Dr. P. K. Baby, Director Youth Welfare Kusar, who is the convener of this program. Now I welcome. Dr. Chinchu, the organizing secretary and the coordinators, Dr. Devi Somija and Dr. Sangeeta Pratap, to this program. Today we have participants 
joining from different states of India. I welcome you all to this program. I also welcome the faculty members, students and staff who are present here in the inaugural function to make it a grand success. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ajita, for proposing the welcome address. We have uh, Dr. Kane Madhubanan, Vice Chancellor of Cochin University of Science and Technology, who is uh, uh, going to give the presidential address. Dr. Madhubanan is also the patron of the Women's Studies Center. Uh, we welcome Sir for the presidential address. Over to you, Sir. Honorable Minister for Higher Education, Dr. R. Bindu. Professor K. Ajida, Director of Women's Studies Center, Dr. P.K. Baby, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor P.G. Shangaran, Registrar, Dr. V. Meera, other dignitaries attending this program, participants. Good afternoon to all of you. Our Youth Welfare Department and Women's Studies Center have come up with a very important program, seven days faculty development program, gender sensitization and gender equality. Let me, at the beginning, congratulate both the centers for coming up, coming up with uh, such a FDP on an important topic like this. Our Women's Studies Center was established almost a decade back. They've been in the forefront of conducting such programs and conducting many research work also on similar topics. Also, our Youth Welfare Department has been in the forefront of reaching out to our young people on various topics of social relevance. The issue which we are going to discuss during this FDP, the importance we all know, especially in the present context. I believe that this issue is discussed particularly in the, with reference to educational institutions. As part of the society, educational institutions also has many issues relating to gender sensitization, gender equality, and so on. It is very important for the faculty members to understand the issues so that they can address or get educated on this issue and address the issues that is coming up in educational institutions. As we know, our nation is a very young nation and we know the girl students and women faculty members and other members of the staff. A large number of uh, uh, people from this sector are coming to our educational institutions. It is very important to provide a very safe and secure environment so that they can work happily in our ecosystem. Many a times we don't understand the importance of the issues they are facing though we claim to be a democratic and equality, a society based on equality and so on. In reality, we all know that's not true. We need to go a long way 
in order to achieve what is the issue so that we can take the message to our society as well as our students and our staff so this is a very good beginning and i'm sure the participants will get immensely from the deliberations in the ftp and i see the list of uh, resource persons attending this program the very very eminent personalities who have been dealing with these issues for quite long time i am sure uh, the uh, discussions will be of much may, much use to everyone thank you thank you very much sir for uh, delivering the presidential address yes we uh, we have tried to bring uh, a very good semblance of expertise to deal with various aspects of uh, gender equality and gender sensitization it's time for the inaugural address with all due respect we request uh, dr r bindu the honorable minister for higher education and social security and also the pro chancellor of the university and an acclaimed teacher herself to inaugurate uh, this fdp please ma'am am i audible yes ma'am you are audible yes honorable chair of the session respected vice chancellor of pachini university of science and technology respected pro vice chancellor dr shangaran honorable dignitaries dear delegates and participants at the very outset let me express my immense delight to participate in this inaugural session of the fdp program on gender sensitization and gender equality organized by cochin university of science and technology i take this opportunity to congratulate the women studies center and department of youth welfare kusat for organizing an fdp on gender as it has become one of the most relevant and socially significant concern in the present environment indian society which is highly hierarchical and pyramidal in structure actively reproduces many strands of exploitation discrimination inequalities and injustices as it is a curious combination of the rotten roots of feudalist ways of thinking and market oriented ethos of capitalism among these different strands of discrimination and inequalities the most deplorable is the gender injustices and inequalities which result from a very conservative and regressive mindset from cradle to grave from womb to tomb indian women are being haunted by the obsolete norms and rules prescribed by a rigid patriarchal society they are always relegated to the margins or they are often excluded there is the systematic displacement of women from the mainstream the family centered ideology places certain strictures and stigmas on women and never allows them to grow as a fully developed human being usually in most cases indian women end up their life only by bearing and rearing children limiting themselves within the four walls of their house they are treated as a non person a non entity by her own family social levels like dowry system envisions women as a burden to be endured rather than an asset to be cherished gender stereotyping the rehearsal for adulthood begins in early childhood and both boys and girls go through a sort of taming or conditioning as part of their socialization process we can detect and recognize 
the ramifications and covert workings of gender ideology if we closely observe the do's and don'ts prescribed for both boys and girls. Both boys and girls from their early life are taught that they have to play different roles in life and to fulfill different expectations. Boys are being trained for their future role as protectors, defenders, and providers, and suggestions are given as they are the decision makers who can go up to the level of dictators in a male-centered patriarchal environment of the family. Girls are trained to assume passive and submissive roles, and the growth of their personalities is ruthlessly suppressed from infancy itself. Girls are being programmed for their secondary social status. They are allocated the role of nurturer, caretaker, and housewife who never gets an opportunity to articulate her aspirations. Let us take the politics of toys. Boys are given guns and cars to play with by proud parents, and girls are provided with kitchen sets and Barbie dolls. Through providing toy guns to play to boys, the parents of boys urge them to assume aggressive uh, role, aggressive masculinity. In poor families, girls are seen as future housewives, not as future breadwinners. In the villages of North India, girls spend their childhood looking after their younger brothers and sisters, lighting the kitchen fire, fetching the water and serving their brothers. As the dowry system compels the family to see the girls as a liability and burden, she is pushed to the lowest pedestal of the hierarchy in the family. Despite the laws against dowry, the malicious practices continue to be emblematic of social prestige. And so the girl child becomes a victim of prejudice even before her birth. Girls are often killed in the womb. In the revolting and criminal practices aided by illegal sex determination tests, millions of Indian girls are aborted. Female feticide and infanticide, infanticide prevail in India due to the gender injustices, gender prejudices of the reactionary society. The commodification of women and commercialization of the rights of marriage are accepted as tradition without being questioning even by educated youth. The notion of aggressive masculinity results in making India notorious for violence against women and transgenders. 70% of women in Indian households are miserable victims of domestic violence and both physical and mental abuse prevail in large quantities, making India a notorious place for women and children, a notoriously dangerous place for women. As far as education is concerned, gender ideology plays a pivotal role in providing limited opportunities and possibilities for the girl child. In states like Kerala, apparently the situation is impartial, but covert ways of marginalization and suppression prevail in large scale. Women used to enter colleges and universities, mainly in general education or in the arts, humanities, and social sciences streams till the early 1990s, a trend which is still continuing to an extent. Science and technology are often labeled as masculine disciplines. The gendered impact of the changes happening in the contemporary global situation is yet to be scrutinized closely, but the rigid patriarchal conventions are still continuing to suppress and sideline girl students in the campus. The study of gender is in fact the study of inequalities and social differences. 
we have to critically understand the issues related to gender, issues related to disciplinary choices, women's under-participation, under-achievement, and under-representation. In the present globalized situation, knowledge has become a commodity. Girls find it difficult to join courses of their aspiration due to the commercialized and elitist trend in the educational sector. In the contemporary Indian situation, both globalization and overt communalization with fundamentalist outlooks have further worsened women's situation. They have become a prey uh, to the use and throw culture, the disposable culture of the consumer-centered, market-oriented approaches of the LPG era, the use and throw culture. Indian campuses, are becoming more and more patriarchal in structure and gender justice is being sabotaged widely. It is inevitable to form internal complaints committees and gender justice forums in all higher educational institutions. Issues related to gender equality and justice are to be discussed widely and questions of subordination suppression and marginalization of women and transgenders are to be addressed urgently. I hope the FDP organized by Kusat would be largely examining and exploring different dimensions of problems associated with gender imbalances and would be offering bad solutions. In the higher educational sector, Women rarely play the lead role in our country. We have only limited presence of women in key roles and decision-making bodies. We have only a few vice chancellors and the decision-making bodies like the syndicate and the senate have only scanty presence of women. In the colleges and higher educational institutions, major decisions are often taken by men even though women have already expanded their access and participation. We have to take initiative in ensuring the participation of women and transgenders in the lead roles and decision-making bodies. The content of books and the details of syllabus and curricula are to be restructured and redesigned to ensure gender equality. I hope the present FDP would be contributing a lot for ensuring insights into the gender issues. Let the FDP turn out to be fruitful in pointing towards a different future. Best wishes for the success of the FDP. With these words, I conclude. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Honorable Minister. And this is what happens when you have a teacher uh, delivering uh, an inaugural address. That was uh, you know, a quite insightful lecture itself. Thanks a lot for that, because most of the topics that you have uh, you know, touched upon are being discussed in the FDP. And most of those topics are in the active consideration of the future research plans of the Women's Studies Center as well. So we thank you a lot for that, ma'am. Now, for the felicitation address, uh, we all heartily welcome Dr. P.G. Shankaran, sir, who is the provost Chancellor of Cochin University. Over to you, sir. Sir, you are not audible. No. Respected Vice Chancellor, is it audible? Yes, yes. Respected Vice Chancellor, Professor Kain Madhusudanan, Honorable Minister for Higher Education and Pro Chancellor of Kusat, Dr. R. Bindu, Dr. V. Meera, Registrar of the University, Dr. K. Ajita, Director and Head of the Department of Hindi. Dr. Baby, Director 
department of youth welfare director uh, youth welfare department and other distinguished uh, participants guest and my dear colleagues i am happy to note that department of youth welfare and center for women studies are jointly organizing a seven days fpp on gender sensitization and gender equality our minister has explained the importance of this particular topic and this is a more important in the current scenario where the pandemic is around i uh, have searched through internet on various as aspects related to gender discrimination in the current scenario uh, of this uh, covid situation um i could see few studies on this uh, and i uh, can easily see that this situation is more affected on women and marginalized communities uh, we know that over 30 million people have been affected by the corona virus in in, in india and covid 19 affected all gender and ages however uh, we know that more than 80% of uh, health workers are women or girls uh, however when it comes to a decision making roles in the health sector they are largely absent since um, women in india spend more hours uh, caring for children the elderly and sick family members and mask and other personal protective equipment are often designed and sized for men women may be at risk more exposure to the virus similarly this also the affected more on women in terms of the employment and further this covid 19 has affected uh, on education of girls and this has affected in a uh, negative manner in domestic uh, the violence against women and uh, then various uh, issues uh, in the at the home and uh, uh, at office so my suggestion today is after the fpp the center has to conduct a rigorous study on uh this particular issue the study is has the covid impacted our uh, women on various uh, issues in terms of violence in terms of um, education in terms of health in terms of um, uh, employment etc so this is a fruitful area of research or study i hope that after the uh, conclusion of fdp you will get more uh, insights into this problem and um the center for women studies uh, will conduct such studies which will be useful in future i wish a very best to this program thank you thank you dear sir for those enlightening words and we are delighted to see that all the dignitaries are kind of experts in in the topic of uh, the fdp itself And, and we are very grateful for all these suggestions. And definitely, definitely, uh, we will plan such a study uh, on the FDP. So, uh, thank you, sir, for that. Now, for proposing the vote of thanks, uh, we request Dr. V. Meera, who is the registrar of the University of Central Technology, and a uh, uh, very close well-wisher of the Women's Studies Center. Uh, we welcome, ma'am. Over to you. a very uh, good afternoon to everybody thank you all for uh, being with us now we have come to the end of this uh, inaugural session of the faculty development program till 13th of this month jointly organized by the department of youth welfare and uh, the women study center kusat and the topic i find very interesting which is the gender sensitization and gender equality as we all know this is very relevant and of 
extreme importance in the modern democratic world uh, just to you know um, for a sustainable development and for uh, building better future to the entire humanity and uh, as we have been witnessing recently like uh, some intolerance developed especially towards the well being or the prospects of women from among various you know geopolitical scenario and uh, i think uh, on the, uh, in this background this fdp will uh, enlighten us or will come forward with better ideas for uh, transforming the world by the, by empowering the women as well and to grace this occasion we had our uh, honorable minister for higher education dr abindu who is also our pro chancellor and i think she is the right person to do the inaugural address being the first woman uh, higher education minister of the state of kerala and uh, she uh, i think she is uh, she has also already expressed the various aspects of the male oriented pyramidal hierarchical society where uh, women are being eliminated as we climb up the pyramid and uh, um on behalf of the entire community of cochin university of science and technology i express my sincere gratitude to our honorable um, higher education minister dr r bindu for um, spending some valuable uh, time with us and for inaugurating this faculty development program thank you ma'am our honorable vice chancellor professor dr k n madhusudan sir has presided over the function and uh, uh, our pro vice chancellor is also with us sharing his views on this topic and uh, i also express my sincere gratitude to both of them for their valuable presence and uh, inspiration thank you sir um i also keep on record the meticulous effort taken in by taken up by the department of youth welfare the director and uh, the head department of uh, um, hindi uh, the director who is also the director of uh, the women study center the coordinators of the program and the entire team behind for uh, bringing up such a uh, faculty development program um, of a wonderful topic of the time thank you all and um, i also thank the distinguished guests uh, all the faculty members students and all other who have been associated with this and also the entire participants because of whom we could make this uh, program possible thank you all once again have a nice day thank you thanks a lot uh, for those encouraging words uh, dr mira who is the registrar of the university of science and technology with that we come to the end of uh, the inaugural session as such and from now on we can get a little bit more uh, informal we have an introduction to the fdp uh, it was scheduled to be delivered by dr devi somija who is the uh, advisory member of university center Unfortunately, she could be, she would not join us here because of some personal emergencies. We have an introduction uh, to the FDP to be delivered by Dr. Prabhana Ishwaran, who is the research associate of the Women's Studies Center. And after the introduction session, we will uh, get on with the keynote address by Dr. Indu Sehotri. Indu is already here. She she joined at exactly two o'clock, and she's uh, you know uh, she's in the audience already here. and we have almost all the participants uh, you know in in attendance too so for an introduction to the fdp i uh, hand over the mic to dr aparna ishwar my colleague
thank you dr tejo a warm welcome to a week long collaborative effort in engendering academic spaces academic disciplines and academic vocabulary here we have envisioned a collective dialogue in understanding gender as it operates in our daily roles as knowledge generators knowledge creators knowledge bearers as well as knowledge sharers who are trying to expand our understanding of equality and justice while striving to also create safe and trusting spaces for future academicians we have designed for over 40 participants coming from different disciplines ranging from psychology to literature to legal studies an interactive experience consisting of a combination of activities which includes which includes collaborative uh, learning exercises which follows lectures from eminent scholars activists as well as practitioners but the true stars of this program are you the 40 participants who are willing to learn relearn unlearn as well as acknowledge the systemic discrimination which produces the marginalities while also trying to collectively remove it. um let us take a few moments to know each other the sojourners in this feminist journey i request all of you to introduce yourself very briefly because we will be starting with the keynote address sharp at uh, 315 um i i will read out the names and i'll um, i request you all to kindly introduce yourself very briefly very briefly we we'll start with dr deepa bs she's here kindly unmute yourself and introduce yourself good afternoon everyone i am I'm working as an assistant professor in the Department of Business and Management of Pratap Institute of Technology. So this is my brief introduction. Thank you for giving this moment to us to talk to you today, and we are looking forward to the FTP program. Thank you, Deepa, Anju, Matthew. If you are in the audience, please kindly unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mr. Sanju Matthew. I work as an assist research assistant, Center for Social Economic and Environmental Studies, Kochi. Thank you, Anju. Dr. Jyoti Nair. I think she's. not here mightly ravi sri lakshmi pc okay varsha priyadarshini sahu but we can see you in the audience list thank you unmute yourself okay um i think we move on to the next person dr prasnya this is a very informal introduction perhaps when we should move on uh, to yeah. the keynote address um, and after which uh, yeah, it might uh, be the ice breaking session that we require the group that um, seems since we don't know each other yeah. much yeah most of the participants seems to a uh, little bit unwilling to uh, you know interview themselves this is what happens with you know uh, when when programs are completely online uh, We have, we have not seeing. Uh, 
but it's okay. Yeah. Um, um, whoever has shared uh, their instructions, I thank you.